Hey guys, uh, Nelson Cuesta here with agentfire.com and today we're going to be talking about creating a perfectly optimized real estate page. So let's just get right into it. Uh, let's go over some fundamentals first. So number one, provide value. I say this in just about every post I write, every video I make, everything that you do with your website, whether it be adding a piece of content, adding a new page, the first thing you need to do is just focus on how am I going to provide value to the person that I'm intending to, to read this. Uh, the key words, everything else should all flow from that, but it starts with how do I provide value? Uh, number two, easy to navigate. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, if we're talking about the website, you want to make sure that you have a clean menu, lots of white space, very specific calls to action. If we're talking about the, uh, the page or the post, you want to make sure that everything is neatly organized. You're using uh, subheadings to break up the content. If you've got images in there, make sure that they're aligned left or aligned right and they're not just thrown in there. Uh, number three, responsive. Uh, I don't think I need to tell you how many people are going to be viewing your site from a non-desktop. So that's an iPad, a smartphone, a tablet. Uh, it, it's 2014, you need to make sure that your site is responsive, the content on your site is well served to any device. Uh, number four, keyword targeted. So even if you don't know what uh, specific keywords you wanna, you wanna target in a page or a post, you should have some sort of keyword focus. Yes, you wanna provide value, and yes, you want to make sure that the content sounds or ca uh, organic, sounds genuine, but at the same time, you should be somewhat understanding of the types of keywords that you need to get into this content in order for it to rank well. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that in a second. So let's just head right into the, the on-page elements now. So for today's video, this is the, the sample page that I've uh, created. You'll notice the title is Orlando Real Estate. Orlando Real Estate is the long tail keyword that we're going to be using. We're going to be, uh, that, that's going to be our primary keyword for this piece of content. So we've got the title up here, a paragraph, we've got a subheading over here, a uh, second paragraph, here's a hyperlink. This is a picture with a caption, and this is some uh, social share icons. Again, I'll go through each one of these individually. Uh, and this is the, the page URL. So again, number one, header text. So when it comes to WordPress, if you're adding a post or a page, your title is automatically going to be in a H1 tag or a heading one tag. Um, the actual content that's going to be written in your visual editor, it's up to you to add subheading tags to or H2 or H3. Um, I personally don't recommend using H1 tags in the actual main content unless you've got uh, a page that really has a completely uh, a bunch of different focuses. For the most part, if you're creating a page, it's got a, a singular focus, and that should be summarized within the title, and that should consist of your keywords. So you want to make sure that your keywords are in the title. You want to make sure that your keywords are in all of the heading tags. So in this example, you'll see the title is Orlando Real Estate. Again, that's the summary of the entire page, H1 tag. Um, this is an H2 tag. Uh, we have overview of the Orlando real estate market. So you'll see we've got the, the keywords uh, in there. Uh, we may have additional, uh, in, in an ideal piece of content, we'd have additional heading tags and additional uh, sections. We may have uh, over, uh, you know, school information for the Orlando real estate market or uh, something else. Uh, if you're not, if the paragraph that's going to be following that subheading is not described by the not described well by the subheading. That's not good. You want to make sure that you have a consistent flow throughout the entire post or the entire page. So in this example, overview of the Orlando real estate market. Uh, I want to make sure that the following paragraph is talking about an overview of the Orlando real estate market. So don't just throw keywords into a, a subheading uh, if there's no context with the actual uh, paragraph or the actual content on the page. You want to make sure that everything is nice and organic. But we'll, again, we'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, number two over here, this is page URL. So generally speaking, your page URL, so if I create this, uh, this post, uh, it's going to be yourdomain.com slash orlando-real-estate. Uh, with WordPress, what happens is it'll, it'll normally just take your title and use that as the page URL. And so the part we're focusing on over here is, of course, not the uh, yourdomain.com part. It's the part that comes after that. So the only thing to note over here, uh, again, you want to make sure that you have your keywords in the page URL, but that's pretty much going to happen automatically if it's in the, the title. Uh, the only thing I, I want to note here is if you've got a really long title, you may want to shorten or you may want to consider shortening your URL a little bit. So if this was, um, if our page title was overview of the Orlando real estate market, 
we may just want to shorten the URL to Orlando-real-estate that or, or Orlando-real-estate-market. Um, you don't want to have a page URL that, that is too long. Uh, number, number three, organic copy. So what we're talking about when I say organic copy, again, this comes back to the, the whole providing value. Um, it's amazing how many agents that I speak with that I'll, I'll go to their site and I'll look at some of the content that they've written and it's very clear that they're just stuffing as many keywords as they can into said paragraph. Uh, you want to make sure that your content is, is readable and it, it just it sounds organic. Um, there's a way to use keywords and there's a way to not use keywords. This is how you use keywords. So in this first paragraph we've got Orlando is a city in South Florida. Generally speaking, Orlando real estate is some of the hottest in the United States. Now, what we did there is we used it organically. Now, if we took this paragraph and we wrote, Orlando real estate is a city in South Florida. Orlando real estate is some of the hottest in the United States, primarily because Orlando real estate, it's not something you want to do. Uh, number one, that just doesn't work. It's called keyword stuffing. It's going to get your site just completely thrown off Google. Uh, number two, if I'm someone that comes to your site, even if it did work, I'm, and I'm reading that paragraph, uh, I'm going to be out of there in a few seconds. So you, you want to make sure that there's a, an organic, uh, kind of sporadic use of keywords throughout the content. You don't want to have the same keyword in, in a paragraph four times or five times. Again, that's going to set off red flags and nobody's going to read it. So just make sure it's, it's kind of mixed up. Um, you'll see over here also in this paragraph, so we've got the real estate market here in Orlando. So you'll see what we did over here is we broke up the main keyword into two different keywords. So again, this is somewhat of an organic use of this primary keyword that we're, we're trying to target. Uh, number four, optimized photos. So with WordPress, WordPress makes this very easy. When you add a photo, you're able to add the title and alt description. Um, make sure that you add something that has your keywords. But again, if you're doing that, make sure that that photo pertains to those keywords. So in this example, um, by the way, in case you can't tell, this is a home and this is Mickey and this is Minnie. Um, again, we're doing Orlando real estate. So but in this example, the, the caption we got over here, and I'll explain that in a second, uh, Orlando real estate near Disneyland is prime. So if this was just a picture of Mickey, uh, I shouldn't be putting anything that relates to Orlando real estate uh, in the title tags for this image, in the description for this image, or in the caption for this image. Um, you want to make sure that you're not trying to manipulate, again, organic value. Um, Captions are another cool thing with WordPress. They're another great way for you to be able to get keywords organically into your content. So again, as you can see in this example, this is essentially a picture of uh, representing Orlando real estate. So it's perfectly fine if we use we create a caption that says uh, Orlando real estate near Disneyland is, is prime. Uh, number five, social share. So when you have great content, people are going to want to share it and you're going to want to make sure that you have your Facebook like, uh, Twitter tweet this, Google plus one this. Um, not only is it important to have that on there just from a sharing perspective, but it's also seen by search engines as a vote of confidence. So if you had a, a bunch of people liking your site, uh, 10 people like, the, like that post, like that page, uh, that's 10 votes of confidence. It's, seen, it's considered a, a social indicator and it's a very good thing to make sure that you have on, on all of your content. Um, number six, interlinking. So tell me if you've seen this before, where you're reading through a blog post or you're reading through someone's page and you'll notice that a, a set of words has a hyperlink and that set of, uh, that hyperlink goes to another page on their site with content that is relevant to that, that hyperlink. Um, what we've done here in this example is, so in this paragraph, and I'll just go ahead and read the entire thing, uh, the real estate market here in Orlando has been booming with new home sales up 50% in 2014. This is in large part thanks to a recent Orlando school report showing that. And this is supposed to be a hyperlink over here. This is Orlando school report. And what we've done is we, we would have, uh, hypothetically, this would be a link to a post or a page that we created pe previously that was pertaining to uh, the Orlando school report. So this again is considered interlinking. It's viewed as a, a very healthy signal from a site. You want to make sure that all your content has links to other content. Not only is, that, is it a good signal for a search engine, but it's also good from a usability standpoint. If I'm someone and I'm reading uh, this particular post and I see this link and it goes to another post that's talking about the Orlando school report, uh, I'm likely to click on it. I'm likely to continue to stay on your, side, uh, on your site and ascertain some value from this. Um, 
it's not a bad idea once you have a bunch of posts, a bunch of pages on your site to uh, go back and maybe create some links uh, between all the content. So if I wrote this Orlando School Report a few months after I wrote this piece on Orlando Real Estate, I may come back to this page and create a link that goes to that school report. Uh, again, interlinking is not only a great indicator for search engines, a healthy indicator, uh, but it's also good from a usability standpoint. Number seven, metadata. So metadata is essentially the meta title and the meta description for your post or your page. Um, here at AgentFire, we use a plugin called WordPress SEO by Yoast. What this allows us to do is from the actual page or post itself that we're creating, we can adjust these things. Um, a lot of people seem to be under the, uh, the misunderstanding that the meta title and meta description have some sort of SEO benefit. Uh, in 2005, they did. They definitely do not anymore. However, it is somewhat important from a, it's called a SERPs or basically a clickability perspective. So normally what happens is if I don't set a meta title or meta description for this post, Google is automatically gonna take this title and they're gonna take some uh, summary of content from this post, whatever they think best reflects this title. So they may not take this first paragraph, they may go down here and take this paragraph if they sense that this is more representative of the post. Now, from a clickability standpoint, if I'm doing a search for Orlando real estate and this happens to come up, it may make sense if you optimize the title tag and description for this page. So instead of the title just being Orlando real estate and the description being Orlando is a city in South Florida, uh, you can do something like um, comprehensive Orlando real estate information as the title. And then the description can also be something catchier. Um, so meta title, meta description, tweak them if you want some increased clickability. Last thing over here we have is, is number eight, uh, Google authorship. So basically, if you have a Google Plus profile, have you ever seen where you do a search for something and you see the person's photo and their name underneath? Um, me personally, if you found this post through a search, you probably saw me with a uh, standing in South Africa with a gigantic giraffe behind me. Um, yeah, I'm actually not sure if that has, uh, or what the exact correlation is between the amount of clicks we're getting, but we're getting a lot of clicks, so I'm gonna assume it works. But uh, Google auth authorship is great. Not only is it a, a considered a social indicator, so it's, it's just another uh, reason for Google to trust your content, but uh, it also includes, it improves click-through rates. So if I see five articles in my search results and I see one of them was written by someone that, and I see their photo and their, their name, uh, that's gonna catch my attention. I'm, I'm much more likely to click that piece of content. So um, that, that's pretty much it for today. If you guys have any questions about this, feel free to email me directly. My email is nelson at agentfire.com. Uh, make sure to follow us, sign up for our newsletter, and thanks for watching.